Hello everyone, and welcome back. Adam Virgil here. I'm really excited for this video because we're going to calculate z-scores on our data set. But not just any type of z-score. We're going to calculate z-scores with conditions. I've gotten this question so many times, and I'm just really excited to show you how to do it now. Z-scores are very different than the two scores that we've done previously. Now, what is a z-score? The z-score represents the number of standard deviations the value is away from the average. Let's go over the other two scores first. First, we did a max-min scaling score, which considers the maximum value and the minimum value in the data set. The second thing that we did was we used percentiles, or percent ranks, and essentially ranked the values from the highest to the lowest value in the data set. And each of these scores gives us a value between 0 and 1, or 0 of 100, or 0 and 100 if we multiply them by 100, which is what we've done. A z-score takes into consideration the variance of the data set, or the variability of the values, which is the standard deviation. So we use the average value, and we use a standard deviation to create a z-score, and typically the z-scores range between minus 3 and 3. A normally distributed data set will have 68% of its values fall between minus 1 and 1 z-score, or within one standard deviation around the mean, or the average, and it will have... I believe 95% of the values fall within two z-scores or a z-score of minus 2 to plus 2. And it will have about 99.7%, I think, of values fall within three, three z-scores or a z-score of minus 3 to plus 3. And we'll see that once we calculate the z-scores, you'll see what I mean. So what this is essentially saying is that if you have a z-score of plus 4, you are way outside the, the normal range, way above average. Enough about that for now, though. Let's start our calculation. And we're going to do this kind of like we did in the first video, where we do some calculations separately and we add them into a, a bigger equation because it gets a little bit complicated. But for the first z-score calculation, we'll do it all in one. Essentially, what we're doing is we're subtracting the value that this person got from the average value of the population and dividing that by the standard deviation or the variance within the population. To do that, we'll go equals whatever's in M2 minus, and let's start a function, average, open parenthesis, and we'll select column M because we want the average of all the of all the values in column M or the CMJ average, and close the parentheses and divide that by. We're going to use a function called STDEV, which gets the standard deviation of all the values also in column M, and close the parentheses. Now what we see is this number is really high. The reason for that is because we did not put parentheses. We need to put a parenthesis, an open parenthesis before M2, and a closed parenthesis after the average M to M. And we can click Enter. And if we copy this formula, and we'll probably get a couple of errors when there's no data, but if we paste it down, and let's just remove a bunch of decimals, right? We should see values mostly between. 0 or minus 2 and 2. This minus 6.8 is an outlier because there's no data here and that's an error. But most of the things uh, fall within uh, two standard deviations around the mean, um, which 95% of all the values should fall within in a normally distributed data set. And if we were to copy and paste this formula all the way to the bottom, I'm sure that we'd get a couple over 2 as well. But that's how we calculate a z-score. That's it. But like we did in the other videos, that might not be enough. We might want to calculate a z-score for each team, right? We might not, if we have female basketball players and male soccer players, 
we might not want both of those cohorts to be included in the same calculation because they're biologically different and one cohort may just in general be better at jumping than the other and we might not intend for all the athletes in one cohort to have lower scores than all the athletes in another cohort. We might want them to be graded against um, each of their cohorts uh, respectively. So to do that, now things get a little bit complicated. What we need to do is we need to change this average to an average ifs, and we need to change this STDEV or standard deviation to a standard deviation with a filter inside of it. So these are two things that we've done already where we used a max and a min to a max ifs and a min ifs. And we've gone from a percent rank to a percent rank with a filter inside of it. And what we're doing now is we're, com we're combining those two concepts or philosophies. Let's start with average ifs. So let's do it right in here. I'm just gonna call this average ifs. And we'll call this uh, stdev filter. In this average ifs area, we'll go equals average ifs, open parenthesis. The first thing that we need is the range that we want to get the average of. And in this case, we want the average of column M, or all the CMJ averages, comma, but we don't want them, we don't want all of the values in here. We just want the values, we want the average of all the values for when the team is equal to the team that the athlete is on. So, for criteria range one, we can select the team, or column E, comma, and for criterion one, we want it to be equal to whatever's in cell E2, which is the team that the athlete is on. And we can close the parentheses and click enter. Now, what this is telling us is that this is the average value of all the CMJ averages, which is a little bit confusing to say, for the Toon Squad. And if we copy this formula and just paste it down here in a row where the team is Monstars, we'll see that the value is slightly different. They're very close, but they're different. Let's undo that. Now let's find the standard deviation for the team that this athlete is on. To do that, we'll go equals STDEV, or standard deviation. Instead of just selecting the values, we're going to use the filter function. So we'll go filter, open parenthesis. The range of values that we want is going to be in column M, or the CMJ average, but we don't want all of them. We want it with a condition, comma. So we want to get the standard deviation of all these values, but only when the team in column E is equal to the team that this athlete is on. Instead of getting the standard deviation of all the values, we just want to get the standard deviation of the values for when um, this the team is equal to the tune squad for at least in this row data. And we'll close the parentheses and click enter. And again, if we copy this formula and paste it to a row that has the mon stars in it here, we'll get a different standard deviation. Perfect. Now, what we can do is we can use this formula. Well, maybe it doesn't make sense to use this formula. Let's start it from scratch. We're going to do the same thing, but use average ifs and standard deviation with filter instead of what we have here. So we'll go equals M2 minus, and let's click this cell where we calculated the average ifs, or we have our aver average ifs formula, and then divide it by that standard deviation formula that we have. It's the exact same equation, but we're just using numbers that have already been calculated. And we can put the parentheses before the M and after the AK2, and click Enter, and we get a z-score. Now, what we need to do is we need to replace this AK2 with the formula that's making up that cell, and we need to replace the AL2 with the formula that's making up the standard deviation filter cell. So what we can do is we can go into this AK2 cell, or where we have our average ifs, copy that formula, but not the equal sign, go into our calculation in AI2, or where the CMJ team Z is, and replace AK2 with paste our average ifs and click enter. Then we can replace this AL2 with whatever's in this standard deviation filter formula. 
It's giving us our standard deviation for the team that the athlete is on. We copy that, go into our CMJ, Team Z, and AI2, and replace AL2 with that formula. And notice the number is the same, and click Enter. Now before we move forward, we're going to do what we did in the other videos, where we're going to write an if statement to say pretty much if the CMJ average is blank, then make the cell blank. If not, then do our calculation so that we don't get numbers like minus 6.8. So we'll start with this formula. We'll go if open parenthesis M2 equals quote quote or is blank, comma. What do we want to do? If that's true, we want it to be quote quote or we want that cell to be blank, comma. If that's not true, then we want to do this equation that we have and we'll close the parenthesis and click enter. And now we'll just do the same thing here. So right after the equal sign, we'll say if open parenthesis M2 equals quote quote or is blank, comma, what do we want to do? We want to make it quote quote or blank, comma, if that's not the case, then we want to do this big calculation that we have here and we can close the parenthesis and click enter. And let's remove a couple of decimal points. And we can copy both of these formulas now, and we'll paste them just down to here for now. And what we can notice is that the values are different at times. And actually, if we just add one more decimal point, we'll see that they're pretty much always a little bit different. Because this one, the CMJ team, is calculating the z-score for this athlete relative to their team, whereas the CMJ Z is calculating the z-score for this athlete relative to everyone else, regardless of team. The last thing that we're going to want to calculate, well, you might know exactly which z-score you want to use if you want to use z-scores, but for me in this tutorial, the last one that we want to calculate is the CMJ average or this, the z-score for the CMJ average considering the event and the team. So if we want a z-score for each event for each team, this is how we do it. The first thing that I want to do is I want to change this average ifs formula, and then I want to change the standard deviation formula. And we could do it beneath, but let's just change it. So currently we want the average of the CMJ average when the team is equal to the team that the athlete's on. Let's remove the parenthesis and add another criteria. So criteria range two, comma, will be when the event ID, or column I, comma, is equal to criterion two, which is cell I2, or whatever the event ID is in question. And close the parenthesis and click enter. Now this is the average for the Toon Squad in training camp 2019. That's what that number represents. Now to get to the standard deviation for the Toon Squad in Training Camp 2019, let's go into this filter function right here and do a comma. And for condition two, we'll say, so right now we want the standard deviation of the CMJ average, or column M, when the team is equal to the team that the athlete's on. And we also want to get the standard deviation when column I, or the event, is equal to I2, or Training Camp 2019 in this case and click enter. So now we have exactly what we need to do our z-score for the event and team. We can copy the formula that we have in AI2 right here. You can copy this whole thing, paste it next door. And now what we need to do is we need to replace this average ifs with our new average ifs and replace this stdev filter with our new stdev filter. So let's go into AK2 where our average ifs formula is, copy this average ifs formula, go into AJ2 and select our average ifs, our old average ifs formula, and paste the new one and click enter. And then let's go to our stdev filter or an AL2, our new stdev filter function, and copy it. Go back into our formula in AJ2 and select our stdev filter, our old one, and paste. 
the new one, add a parenthesis and click enter. And let's remove some of these decimals. And now let's copy AH2, AI2, and AJ2, where all, where all three of our formulas are. We'll copy them, go to the bottom of our sheet and paste. And now we have Z scores for all those three different conditions. So how do we interpret this? Let's just, uh, let's hide all this stuff. Let's pick an athlete. They're all kind of similar. Let's pick this person. Okay, they jumped 24 inches for CMJ average. That number, 24 inches, is 0.96 standard deviations above the average for everybody in this data set, which is good, right? He's about one standard deviation above average. That's good. Now, when we compare this athlete to their team only, so excluding anyone that is not on the Monstars, they're 0.9, which means that they are 0.9 standard deviations above the average. So not as what not as good compared to just their team as they are compared to everybody in the data set now when we consider the event and the team this person is 1.19 standard deviations above the average so for the mon stars or this person is 1.19 standard deviation above the average for training camp 2019 for the mon stars now this same person, Raul Pierce, right here, is only 0.56 standard deviations above the average for their team during this session in season 10-24-2019, which means that they were not as high above average in this session as they were during training camp. That's essentially what it's saying. So I hope that that makes sense. Let's undo this um, hiding. Oh, no, let's not undo that. What did I, uh, yeah, no, I guess I have to undo that and then I'll rehide this stuff. Let's rehide this stuff so that we just have the scores. Hide this and we'll remove this, this data here. And that's all we got, right? We, we have the Z scores now with conditions. And one thing I wanna harp on here is I'm just picking things to, use as conditions. You might want to do a z-score per position. You might want to do a z-score per something else, per age range. I, I have no idea, but any conditions that you want can be applied here so that you have a z-score per cohort that, that's relevant. And the same thing is true with percent ranks and uh, our maximum scaling. You can add as many conditions, whatever conditions you want to these, and watch those videos and just think about your data and your context as you're going through this and you'll be able to apply the conditions that you need to to make sure that it's relevant for you and if you got some value out of this video please make sure to give it a like and if you've been a fan of this content on the channel in general please make sure that you subscribe to the channel that means a lot to me let the YouTube algorithms know that this is somewhat helpful for some people out there and at the very least, you'll be notified when new videos come out, which I'm very for forgetful of notifying people publicly about them. So you'll be in the loop and won't have to wait. And that'll be helpful for you. Thanks again for watching. I'm really excited to see you in the next video.